Well, hi there. Do you have an IELTS speaking test coming up? And are you stressed by it? Relax. I've got some top tips for you. I'm Nasi, and I am an IELTS test preparation specialist. I have to be honest with you guys. If I were taking the speaking test, I'd be a little nervous, apprehensive as well. So let me try and guide you through some of the do's and don'ts to help you score well. All right, first and foremost, have you heard the idiom, the early bird catches the worm? Well, you're not going to really catch any worms. You're not really going to benefit um, in that way. But if you arrive early, you will be calm. You will be relaxed. And I honestly believe that being calm and relaxed will help you score better. When someone is feeling stressed or frazzled, when they arrive at the 11th hour, imagine walking into the test center at the last minute. You are going to feel very unbalanced and unsettled, and you're going to be trying to catch up and rushed for time. So my suggestion is arrive early. And that's my advice for life in general. Punctuality is important, but arriving early gives you time to compose yourself, to get your head in the right place. My second piece of advice is so easy. Move to England for 48 hours before the test. And you are probably thinking, wow, this is a crazy tutor. Well, I am joking, but not completely. What I suggest is that you create an English-only atmosphere for 48 hours. To get your head in the game, to think in English, to respond in English. Okay, think about it. When you take an English lesson, the first few minutes are difficult. Speaking, organizing your thoughts, even listening. At the end of an hour or 90 minutes, you feel so much more confident. Now, imagine that situation for your IELTS test. If you spend the 48 hours before the test, watching English movies, listening to English movies in the background. You don't actually have to be sitting in front of the screen and watching, listening to podcasts, drinking English tea. I'm just kidding. And reading articles in English and speaking in English before the test. Think about how much that would Get your head in the game. And as for speaking in English for 48 hours before the test, book a session a day with the tutor. Informal speaking. But make sure that you've got some input in terms of the movies you are watching and the podcasts you are listening to and even what you are reading and some output, some practice. So book a session each day for the two days before your test just to help you with your speaking to organize your thoughts. All right, next one is stay calm. But this is easier said than done. But there are ways in which you can stay calm. Breathe deeply. Know that you have prepared fully for this test. You've done everything you can. There's nothing left to do. 
meditate rather than medicate. I know some people do like to take medication to calm them down, but you know that can dull your senses. It can slow down your reaction time. It can make you sleepy, and if you're taking it for the first time, well, you don't know what effects it may have. The next one is take a long stroll, go for a walk. And listen to a podcast while you are doing that. It's really important to have a good breakfast. You don't want to get hungry midway through the test. And last but not least, hydrate. Drink lots and lots of water, and probably a cup of coffee when you get up. Okay, now, oh my. God, what should I wear? Well, just try to look neat and clean. Informal is great. A pair of jeans and a t-shirt. That's fine as long as everything is nice and neat and clean. Showing up in a formal shirt with a tie, but the shirt hanging out—that doesn't really create a good first impression. All right, and first impressions count. Now let's get started with the test. After the formalities, the examiner is going to ask you a few warm-up questions about you, your work or studies, and your home. Now this is the warm-up, so keep it short and simple. Two to three sentences for answer. Is fine. We don't want monologues and lectures and ego-driven answers. No. Just think about how you would answer if I asked you these questions in a social setting. If we met in a coffee shop. If you were chatting with a tourist. If you were at a party, and someone asked you questions about. Hey, where do you work? Are you going to read out your CV for them? No. So this is really important. I cannot overemphasize the importance of spoken English as opposed to written English. Written English is rather unnatural, and if you speak the way you write, you're going to sound like. A poet, or Hemingway, or a textbook, and you don't want that. So keep it informal. Now, first impressions count. So even though the start is a warm up, there's no harm in creating a good one. Why not create a good first impression? So use sentences which are clear and concise. Keep them simple, but don't make grammar errors. Okay. Imagine the examiner is listening to you in the warm-up, and you are already making grammar errors. It's kind of a red flag, a warning sign that this is just going to get worse. Now, remember, this is an informal speaking test, so please don't lecture the examiner. When I say lecture, don't use that hard, harsh tone. Don't sound like you are reading from a textbook. But while you are speaking, focus on accuracy, and add in a few interesting words, vocabulary, idiomatic language. This is a language test, after all. Now let's look at the first question that you would get: Do you work or study? Two to three sentences. Well, actually, at the moment, I'm working while studying part time. I currently work at Facebook and have been there since two thousand and eight. So, I haven't read out my CV. I haven't told the examiner about all of my qualifications and my great job title and who I'm in charge of and what a big cheese I am. No. 
I've just answered the question quite naturally. Well, actually, at the moment, I'm working while studying part time. I currently work at Facebook and have been there since 2008. So, even though this is a very natural, informal answer, I've still incorporated grammar. So, I currently work and I have been there since, and I've used since correctly, 2008. So, for 12 years. So, just because I'm speaking naturally and informally does not mean that I can't use grammar. Do you enjoy your job? Well, as a web designer, it's challenging but rewarding. So, it's a challenging but rewarding job since because I work online and from my home office it's very flexible and the salary is pretty good. So yes, I do get a kick out of it. I enjoy it. So what I've done here is I've used an idiom to replace enjoy and think I'll be staying there for a while. So I sound very natural but this answer does have excellent grammar. Now, there are two ways you could read this answer or you could present this answer. And this is where your tone and intonation comes in. So, I'm going to start with the wrong way and then we're going to do the right way. So, as a web designer, it's challenging but rewarding job. Since I work online and from my home office, it's very flexible and the salary is pretty good. So yes, I do get a kick out of it and think I'll be staying there for a while. Right, think about all the things that were wrong in the delivery. All right, there were no pronunciation issues, I think, because there weren't any challenging words. But what about the tone? What about the chunking? Did I speak in words or did I speak in chunks and phrases? Now, let's try a different way. A spoken way, informal speaking with tone, intonation and chunking. So, as a web designer, it's a challenging but rewarding job. Since I work online and from my home office, it's very flexible. And the salary is pretty good. So yes, I do get a kick out of it and think I'll be staying there for a while. Now this is important because two students could have the same answer but the difference is in the delivery and that's going to affect the score. Let's take a look at Another question about your job. Is there anything about your job that you don't like? Well, in a word, deadlines. They always seem to be looming and I often have to burn the midnight oil meeting deadlines. So, these are two short sentences but think about it in terms of the criteria. Are these good sentences. Though, do remember, we are still in the warm-up stage, so there's no need for all the bells and whistles, but you do want to create a good first impression. And I'm just trying to take you through what answers should sound like. Right, now let's talk about your hometown. Tell me about the town where you live. Now, you're thinking, are these two questions or is this one question? Oh my God, what must I do? Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Take a deep breath. The first sentence is just a signpost. So, you can discuss your hometown if you still live there or the town where you live now. So, my hometown is in South Africa but I now live in Turkey. So, the town where I live is different from my hometown. But hey, calm down. 
It's not a trap. Just answer the question. So, in order to answer, focus more on your vocabulary, your adjectives, and your idioms. So, let's talk about your hometown. So, the examiner is just introducing this idea of hometown, a place, a village, a town. Not clothing, not sunglasses, not the car you drive. Hometown. Okay. Tell me about the town where you live. Now, thinking in terms of language, is it a big town? Is it a small town? Is it a bustling metropolis or a quaint village? Are there skyscrapers or historic buildings? So, you could start out with, "Well, I live in this place, and I've been living there since." It's a charming little coastal town, a rather quaint village that has lots of ancient historic buildings. It's quiet for most of the year, but attracts hordes of tourists in the summer because of the pristine beaches and interesting historic sites. So I've answered the question, "Where do I live?" I've added in details about how long I've been living there. Charming little coastal town, nice adjectives. A rather quaint village that has lots of ancient historic buildings. Now, use adjectives, but don't overuse them. Sometimes candidates want to give you a list of four adjectives before a noun that doesn't sound natural. That's not how we speak. Also, we don't always speak in full sentences. We pause, and pausing is okay if you pausing. To come up with ideas, not pausing because you don't know the grammar structure or something like that. So it's quiet for most of the year, but attracts hordes of tourists in the summer because of the pristine beaches and interesting historic sites. So I've added. Some details. So always start out in a very general way and then build. But here, I've stayed true to the three sentence rule. So, what's the most interesting thing about your town? So that would be another question that is likely to come up. Well, off the top of my head, okay. So if you're asking me and I have to think of something right now, well. I'd say that the most interesting thing about my town is the architecture. Some of it dates back, so it goes back hundreds of years. And there's an amazing little church, the Church of a Hundred Doors, which is rather unique. Now, look, I could have said unique, but I've qualified it with rather. Okay, so rather unique, and this does take the score up. The locals say that if you exit through the correct door, and no one knows which one that is, you will be blessed. All right. So when answering, don't lecture. Keep your language spoken English. Don't try to sound like a poet. Don't try to sound like Hemingway, and do not try to sound like a textbook. When you are preparing your answer, write down phrases, not sentences. Obviously, in the test for part one, you're not going to write down anything. But I'm talking about pre-test preparation. Okay, when you are working through all of the different questions, write down phrases, not sentences. So, bustling metropolis, and then. Take that phrase and create an answer out of the phrase. Another important point is: do not memorize sentences. It's so obvious when a candidate is trying to repeat a sentence which has been memorized, and when they suddenly forget one word in that sentence, they get so stressed out. No, no, no! Don't do that. Do not memorize sentences. Learn. Phrases and use those phrases in your everyday speaking. Speak in chunks. Don't speak in individual words. Imagine if I delivered this entire tutorial speaking in 
individual words you would have left a long time ago. Don't forget about tone and intonation. So let's look at some tone and chunking here. So I've underlined the chunks, okay? And in the chunks, think about which word you would like to emphasize. What's the important word in that chunk? So it's a charming little coastal town. Do I want to draw attention to coastal or charming? Ancient historic buildings. It's stunning. Imagine me saying, it's stunning. It's stunning. Okay. So this is what I want you to think about. So I live in Paros and I've been living there since 2010. It's a charming little coastal town, a rather quaint village that has lots of ancient historic buildings. Oh, it's stunning. It's quiet for most of the year, but attracts hordes of tourists in the summer because of the pristine beaches and interesting historic sites. Now, I've overemphasized, of course, because I want to draw your attention to what you should be doing. Now, let me just deliver this answer in a way that I would if I were chatting with a friend. So, hey, Nas, where are you living now? And what's interesting about your town? Well, I live in Paros, and I've been living there since 2010. It's a charming little coastal town, a rather quaint village that has lots of ancient historic buildings. Oh, it's stunning. You know, it's quiet for most of the year, but attracts hordes of tourists in the summer, obviously because of the pristine beaches and interesting historic sites. Now, that's how I would answer the question if I were speaking to a friend. And this is an informal speaking test. So don't lecture, speak. Use spoken English, not written English. Okay, now let's move on to the next set of questions, which would be about your home. So let's talk about your home or accommodation. Do you live in a house or a flat? So think in terms of vocabulary. This is a language test after all. Do you live in a duplex? Or do you live in a penthouse? Lucky, lucky you. Or a tiny one-bedroom apartment? Do you share a two-bedroom flat with an exchange student or a colleague or your best friend? Use adjectives and use idioms to describe your accommodation. Is it ordinary, like run of the mall? Nothing special, hmm, nothing to write home about. Is it tiny? Is it the size of a shoebox? So, candidates, that's how you create your answers. So, to reiterate, when you are answering, don't lecture. You spoken language, spoken English, not written English. Try not to sound like a textbook. When preparing your answers before the test, write down phrases and not sentences. Create answers out of these phrases and please do not memorize sentences. It's so obvious in the exam. Speak in chunks, not in single words. And last but not least, don't forget about, yes, intonation and tone. And that's a wrap, folks. Good luck, and I hope you get an amazing score in the IELTS speaking test. If you would like to go through the speaking part two questions, we have a course available for you. So sign up and watch your scores rocket. Thank you for watching. Ciao.